Good morning, class. Good morning, <laughs> Welcome to Faith School. We invite you to come right on in today. We've saved you a class, uh, excuse me, a, a desk right here in the Faith School class. Get you a Bible, get something to take notes on. And uh, we are agreeing together and giving the Lord opportunity, the Spirit of God, the Master Teacher, to teach us about God's ways, His ways of faith, the way He operates, the way He functions and lives. Scripture says faith pleases Him, that without it, impossible to please Him. We want to please Him. We want to please Him more and better. So agree with us today. Come on in. Let God be your teacher. Father, in Jesus' name, we agree together as touching this, asking for the anointing, asking for utterance, asking to understand your high ways, to know your truth that makes free, to be conformed, not to this world, but to your will and your ways. And we'll walk in it, and we thank you for manifesting it in our lives, performing your word as you are so faithful to do. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. If you would turn with us again today in the textbook, the Bible, to Hebrews, the 11th chapter, we've been talking all week about what faith is. What is it exactly? Not different people's ideas and opinions, but the Bible tells you what faith is. In verse 1 of Hebrews 11, it says, Now faith is, what, what, what is faith? Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Uh, the, the NET, the New English Translation, says it like this. Now faith is being sure of what we hope for, being convinced of what we do not see. To just take one word, faith is persuasion. Being in faith about something is being persuaded of that. Abraham was said to be fully persuaded. What God told him, he was able to perform. But then uh, this verse tells us two specific areas of things we're persuaded about. That we're persuaded about things not uh, seen. We're persuaded about things not yet. Things hoped for, things expected, or things not yet. We saw, talking about yesterday that God is the God of hope as well as the God of faith and that He will fill us with all joy and peace when we're in believing. Let's look again at that scripture in Peter that we talked about, 1 Peter 1 and 7. 1 Peter 1 and 7, it says that the trial of your faith, being much more precious than of gold that perishes, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. Our faith doesn't just pertain to this life. The faith we learn how to use here and now, we will use the rest of our existence because faith is uh, God's way of operating. Eternity past, in the present, and for eternity future. But uh, he said this faith, during what's going on now, is being refined, it's being purified, and when we develop in faith in this life, past this life, the Lord Himself is going to honor this faith. He's going to praise this faith at the appearing of Jesus Christ. Verse 8 says, describes this faith, whom having not seen, we haven't seen the Lord Jesus, and yet we love Him. We, uh, though now you see Him not, yet believing, you rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory, receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your souls. 
Though we don't see him, haven't seen him, we love him. Even though we hadn't seen him yet, we're rejoicing now, ahead of time. How, how could you love somebody you've never seen? Well, spirit is real. Flesh is not the only thing that's real. In fact, the Bible tells us all of this is going away. Even this very earth and heavens that exist now is going to pass away. And there are going to be new heavens and new earth. And this body in its current state is going to be changed. We're all looking forward to that. <laughs> Go, we, were, we were in Hebrews 11. I should have had you hold your place there. But go back to Hebrews 11. This entire chapter deals with this wonderful subject of faith. And we are not just given a definition of faith in the beginning, but we're given verse uh, 2 through verse uh, 40 now, after verse 1, example after example after example after example of what he meant by faith is confidence and faith is conviction of things not seen and not yet. He doesn't just leave you hanging with a definition. He shows you living examples of it with Abraham, Sarah, Noah, David, the list goes on and on, Samson, and the Bible tells us that all these amazing, miraculous things that happened in their life happened through faith. Yes, it was God's power that, that caused it to come to pass, but it was their faith that received it. And their faith that responded and walked and act, acted and caused it to happen. We see verse 6, if you'd, if you'd look. Without faith it is impossible to please him, to please God. He that comes to God must believe that he is, even though you don't see him. See, if, if you saw him, you wouldn't have to believe that he is. And you must believe he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. If you always saw all of the reward and you saw the goodness of God manifested instantly in every situation, you wouldn't have to believe that he is a rewarder. That means there will be times and situations where you don't see it yet, you haven't experienced yet, and it may not look and feel like it, but you're convinced God's good. And if I'll stay hooked with him, something good's coming out of this reward and blessing and benefit is coming. I may not see it today, but I'll receive the end of my faith. And for this is all said and done, when the dust clears, we'll be standing here with the answer, with the victory, and it'll be evident that God was good and God is real and he's a rewarder. But in verse 7, it says, by faith, Noah being warned of God of things not seen as yet. You see, he gave us the definition, but he's going to keep showing us through living examples in people's lives what he's talking about. Noah, being warned of God of things not seen as yet. We got these four words describe all the areas he mentioned. Not seen as yet. Not seen not yet. He moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house, by which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness, which is by faith. Now, we read in Genesis about this, and up until that point, it had not rained on the earth like it rains now. There's actually a superior system and a way of functioning than what we experience now. God uh, originally, apparently there was a strong mist and a dew that came up that was just perfect, not too little, not too much, and everything was perfectly watered. That was the Garden of Eden. Before man fell and messed it up, now 
We got too little rain or too much. It's too dry or too wet or too flooded. That's not how God designed it. That's the result of the fall. And, uh, but Noah, uh, you know, uh, even after the fall, all that had not changed until the flood. And so they had never experienced. When you're talking about it's going to come a flood, he, nobody knew what that was. Nobody understood that. But when God told Noah, it's going to come, and it's going to rain, and it's going to rain, and there's going to come a flood, and everything's going to be covered with water, he had no reason on earth to believe that, except that God told him. Nobody had ever seen it. Nobody had ever experienced it. It was unseen. And if it was going to happen, it hadn't happened yet. But we see, and, and we get into something that James talks about. James says, faith without doing something is dead. Faith without an action is dead. And so we see why Noah... Why God picked him. Why God told him. Because he knew, here's a man that will believe me without one shred of meteorological evidence. <laughs> Noah could not have found one expert in his day that would have told him that what God had told him was possible or could happen. It had never happened. There's no history. There's nothing on record. And the way the current atmospheric conditions were, it couldn't happen. But they didn't know those conditions could change. And the atmosphere could change. And the depths of the earth could be broken up. And what was about to happen no, nobody could have conceived of it. But Noah didn't have to have any of that. <laughs> Even though it was unseen, no evidence, it had never happened yet, Noah starts building an ark. <laughs> Can you see why he's in the book, friends? <laughs> And we, we have evidence in Scripture that indicates he was mocked. And this didn't just go on for a few days. This went on for months and months and months. And besides that, this is a big project. Where's all this money coming from? You find out if you really believe something when you've got not one reason in the natural to do it. And yet you work on it every day and you put all your money into it and you keep believing and people make fun of you and laugh at you and you just keep on doing it. And though that was happening on the earth, the mocking and the scoffing, yet what Noah was saying and doing was honoring God in heaven because the angels and anyone else that could see and know about it was saying, would you look at that? in the middle of a whole world that's laughing and making fun of what God said, here's a man that says, if God said it, better get you an umbrella. <laughs> you better, and you better, you better get you a boat. It's what you need, and we need a big one because it's going to affect the whole earth. And, and can you see it? He was moved with fear, and he started preparing an ark to the saving of his house when there was nothing seen and nothing yet but a word from the Lord. Do we want to follow these kind of examples? Yes, we do. Yes, we do. If you skip on down to the uh, 27th verse, this, this to me is so powerful. I know it is to you. Concerning the unseen, I tell you, back up to verse uh, 24 to get a little bit more of this. Hebrews eleven twenty four. 24, by faith Moses, when he was come to years, 
He grew up and became an adult, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season, esteeming the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures in Egypt, for he had respect to the recompense of the reward. What reward? When? Verse 27, by faith he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king. How did he do it? He endured as seeing him who is invisible. Why did Noah build an ark? Why did he put all his time and labor and money into it for months and months and months? Why did he endure the laughing and ridicule and scoffing and mocking? He was looking at the invisible. He was basing it completely on something unseen and not yet. Moses, even though a a Hebrew, was taken in by the daughter of Pharaoh and was uh, raised as a prince. He's in the royal household. Talk about born with a silver spoon in your mouth. I mean, this is not just silver spoon, gold everything. I mean, they were treated like living gods, the Pharaoh and family. Didn't want for anything. And yet, when he becomes an adult, he chose to be afflicted with the people of God. He chose to be out on the desert, in the desert with them and to be, they're a slave people and to be treated like one of them instead of the riches of the treasures of Egypt. Why? Because he had revelation that this life is not all there is. That there is something beyond this life that you can't, you can't see right now. There's a reward coming after this life for those that trust God and obey Him. But we're talking about something not seen. Something not yet. In fact, He uh, renounced the, luxur- the luxurious lifestyle and and, and all the riches and, and all the special treatment. And, and he said, no, I, I would rather experience reproach with God's people than to live like a king, like a pharaoh, with the ungodly and the unbelievers. I choose faith. I choose seeing the unseen. I choose Rejoicing about things that hadn't happened yet. (laughs) People can scoff and mock, but that's what he chose. And he endured. How did he do it? Verse 27. He forsook Egypt. Not fearing the wrath of the king, he endured as seeing him who is invisible. Said out loud, seeing him. Who is invisible. invisible. Hallelujah. Can you see the invisible? How? By faith. (laughs) By faith. Can you shout about something that hasn't happened yet? Only one way. (laughs) By faith. faith. Look, we're in Hebrews 11. This was not written in chapter and verse. So chapter 12 is actually just a continuation of the thoughts that are in chapter 11. Look at at chapter 12. Chapter 12, he had described to us for verses 2 through 40 in chapter 11 what faith is. It's the confidence and conviction of things not seen and not yet. And in chapter 12, verse 1, he says, Wherefore, seeing we are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, what, what, what cloud of witnesses? All these people he just got through talking about and all those that have joined them, them since. People who live down here by faith in their life and now have gone on. You know one thing that faith people really like? 
other faith people. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they do. Because you just like faith no matter where you find it. And it doesn't matter man, woman, what background, what culture. Faith recognizes faith. And when somebody stands up and speaks and acts in faith, you go, oh, yeah. Yeah, that's one of my kind right there. Well, all of them in heaven are faith kind. And they recognize us as their kind. And they're rooting for us. They're wanting us. What are they wanting us to do? Not just keep all the right rules. What are they wanting us to do? They're wanting us to have faith like God has faith. Like Jesus and to walk in faith like Abraham walked in faith. And like Noah did. And like Joseph did. And like Jesus did. And like Paul did. And we've got this great cloud of faith witnesses. And seeing that we got that, let's lay aside every weight, every sin, anything that would hinder us. Let's run with persistence and patience the race that is set before us. Look into what? Looking unto Jesus. Is this talking about physically seeing Jesus with your natural eyes? No, it's talking about what 2 Corinthians 4.18 talks about. We look not at the things that are seen, but at the things that are not seen. Because the the things that are seen, they're all passing away anyway. Why fixate on all this? It's not going to be here much longer. But the things that are not seen are eternal. Can I have things that my natural eyes are seeing that are not very good? But can I, by faith, see something that's not seen? By faith, can I look unto Jesus? Is He real? Is he there? Even though I don't see him with my eye, he's real. He's there. And he's the one that gave me this faith. And he began a good work in me. And he will complete and finish this good work in me. He's the author of my faith. And he is the finisher and the completer of the faith that's in me. He started, did it, and finished And now I'm following his track. I'm running in his footsteps. Hallelujah. I want to live like Jesus. And by faith I am living like Jesus. And praying like Jesus. And believing like Jesus. And speaking like Jesus. Overcoming like Jesus. And we can do this until. This life is so short. I know it may seem like time drags on now. But it's just because this is the only thing we've ever experienced. It is so, so brief. Soon it'll be over. And we we want to say like Paul, I have kept the faith. I have fought a good fight. I have kept the faith. I have run my race. I have finished my course with joy. How did he do it? How did he do it? How did Noah do it? How did Abraham do it? How did Moses do it? How did Jesus do it? By faith, by faith in the unseen one, faith, faith. He said he endured, don't you like that? He endured as seeing him who is invisible. Let's just act on that right now, right now in class. There may be so many things that you have seen that could be alarming or distressing But just close your eyes and don't look at that stuff anymore. And let's see him who is invisible. Come on, say it out loud. I'm looking looking unto Jesus, Jesus. my Lord, my my Savior, Savior. the author author and the finisher finisher of my faith. faith. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. And the scripture said Moses endured. They went through some stuff, didn't they? I mean, making it through all those plagues and all those challenges and then through the Red Sea and then through. How did he endure? How did he endure? As seeing him who is invisible. Only way you can do that is by faith. And the scripture tells us that Jesus, if you read the rest of that passage in, in, in Hebrews 12. That's how Jesus himself endured the cross. For the joy 
and for the hope that was in front of him. Does that sound like faith? He was experiencing some pain, but he wasn't looking at that. He was looking at something not seen and something not yet. He could see your face and mine. He could see us delivered, us saved, us forgiven. And by that, he endured what was going on right then. Said out loud, I'm living like Jesus. I'm walking like Jesus. The faith of God that overcomes it all. Hallelujah. That's it for today, class. We'll see you next time in Faith School. Hello, friends. Hope you've enjoyed Faith School this week. Uh, We're here at the end of another week. I wanted to remind you about what the Lord has quickened to me about partnership. The scripture says, how will they call on him in whom they've not believed? How will they believe in him in whom they've not heard? How will they hear without a preacher? The answer is they won't. God has chosen that men and women believe through the preaching and teaching of the gospel. He has ordained that it happen that way. And the next verse, Romans 10, 15 says, How shall they preach except they be sent? And you, you see both the Lord sending by His call and anointing and spirit, but also there's the element of Him using people to send. I know at the beginning of our ministry, the Lord quickened to me. He said, you're going to need partners to help you do what I'm calling you to do. And uh, he dealt with us, you be faithful partners, and then I'll add to you. And the broadcasts that have been brought to you uh, this week are brought by the faithfulness of our partners. We call them word senders because he said, how will they preach except they be sent? And if this has benefited you and blessed you and you want to help send it to somebody else at no charge to them, you can become a word sender too. There's information there on the screen that you can contact and get involved that way. And if the Lord puts it on your heart, we receive you as a partner. And remember, he said, them that honor me, I will honor. Hallelujah. We bless you in the name of the Lord Jesus.